Hello, welcome. Uh, I would now like to do an example illustrating all of this the Apinov function stuff and what better place to start than with the simple pendulum. So we have a, a rod with a, a mass attached um, to the end that's also attached to the ceiling and it's free to swing from side to side and it's hopefully you've seen in the exercises and hopefully you knew this uh, already. Um, the equations of motion for the pendulum can be given by this differential equation here. So here this is the moment of inertia of the bob um, at the distance L, assuming that the, um, the rod is massless, and this is just the acceleration um, due to gravity here. So this is the equations of motion for the pendulum. Now we want to do our Lyapunov analysis, so the first thing we've got to do is put it into our standard form. This is becoming pretty familiar now, so we introduce our state x1, x2, and we set x dot is equal to f of x, and in this case, we can put an x2 here and a minus g over l sine x1 here. So we've made the choice for our state to be theta and theta dot. Um, so this bottom equation here, this is just our uh, state space model in these new coordinates, and this is our sort of extra equation that we throw in whenever we have higher order derivatives here. So this is our um, equation of the form x dot is equal to f of x, and now we would like to start doing some Lyapunov analysis. So we need a few things. We need a region omega, we need a Lyapunov function. Let's deal with, and we need an equilibrium point. So let's just deal with omega and our equilibrium point first. And we're going to look at the equilibrium point, 0, 0. So this corresponds to having the pendulum in the downward uh, position here. And our region of the state space that we're going to look at, remember we needed a bounded one. So we're going to have x1, x2, such that, and now we're going to say um, minus pi is less than x1, it's less than pi. So we're just looking at uh, angle ranges, so not quite vertical, just a little bit shorter vertical all the way to all the way around the other way. So that's the region of values that x1 is being allowed to take. And then we could look at global results or check that other condition, but we'll just say that the size of x2 is less than some huge constant k. So we're going to do Lyapunov analysis on this region of omega, and we're going to study this equilibrium point. Now we need a Lyapunov function. And up to now, we've been continually talking about Lyapunov functions like their energy functions. This connection is extremely deep, so we're just going to use the energy as our Lyapunov function. So we're going to set V of x to be equal to the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy of this system here. And that's why I've marked on this little line here, this line of zero potential energy. Uh, so the idea is that this is a length L below. So if the pendulum is in the downward position, if it's in the equilibrium position, then we're at the point of zero potential energy. So what is the potential energy of this setup? Well, it's equal to mgl1 minus cos of x1. So how can we see that? Well, this length here, this is just l cos theta, which is l times cos of x1. This length here is l, so we get L times 1 minus cos x1. This is the potential energy. And to this we add the kinetic energy, which is a half m multiplied by the velocity. So the angular velocity is x2. So we need an x2 squared and then we need an l squared. We need to scale it by the. So the velocity is l times x2. So the velocity squared is L squared x2 squared, so the uh, kinetic energy is this thing here. Okay, fine. 
this is our energy function for this system here. Um, how do we go about checking the various bits and pieces? Well, the first thing we needed to check was that v of x star is equal to zero. So say x1 is equal to zero, x2 is equal to zero. x2 is equal to zero, that term is zero. x1 is equal to zero, cos of x1 is equal to one, this is zero. So check. Two, we need v of x to be bigger than zero for all x in omega, except x star. And again, we can just see this directly here. Um, as long as x1 lies in this region here, cos of x1 will always have um, will always be a little bit less than 1. So this thing can only become 0 at um, the value that x1 is equal to 0. And similarly, this thing is always positive, except for the value x2 is equal to 0. So check. And now the third condition, well, this now depends whether or not we're going for stability, asymptotic stability, global asymptotic stability. We're just going to go for stability now. And there's a reason why we're only going for stability now. Maybe you can uh, start to think ahead and uh, work out what will go wrong if we look for anything more. Um, but um, to get stability, we need v dot x to be less than zero um, for x omega. And so to do this, we need to remember what this guy was. And this is just v dot is equal to the gradient of v and dot producted with x dot, which is just f of x. So what do we need to find? Well, we need to find the gradient of v, which is just dv dx1, dv dx2, dot producted with f of x, and f of x we have here. So here we have x2. Here we have minus g divided by L sine of x1. So let's just work out uh, these final pieces, dv by dx1 and dv by dx2. So dv by dx1, well, we just have to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x1. When we differentiate minus cos, we get sine. So this thing is just mgl sine of x1. And now we need to well, this, yeah, differentiate this, but this doesn't depend on x1, so that's zero. And similarly, dv by dx2. Well, this doesn't depend on x2, so that's just naught. And here we have ml squared x2. So all that remains is to take this dot product and work everything out. So the first thing we have is dv dx1 multiplied by x2. So we get mgl uh, sine x1, and this whole thing is multiplied by x2, plus product here, and this is ml squared x2 multiplied by minus g over l sine x1. And now you see, oh, everything disappears, and this is equal to zero, but this is less than or equal to zero, so check. And here is an example of how we would go about um, uh, using our Lyapunov uh, procedure to prove um, stability of an equilibrium point on a given uh, domain. And this means that given any level set of this Lyapunov function in the region omega, we would never leave it. So this is a bit weird. Um, and now you can sort of see why we couldn't have gone for anything stronger uh, than um, 
stability, this is not strictly less than zero, so our asymptotic stability condition fails. And now let's just try and think why that's the case. Well, there's no losses in this system. This is a lossless mechanical system. And so if we let the pendulum go, it's just going to swing back and forth, it's back and forth, back and forth, and it's going to keep going forever. Um, and so the system is only stable. It's not locally asymptotically stable. And that's what we were able to show. Um, and if you want to get a little bit ahead, try putting some damping in and see what happens. <laughs>